all right guys we are back in my garage for another video and it is super early but we're up early for a good reason we are headed to another track weekend we're actually going back to putnam park i haven't been here in a year at this point unfortunately this is my first time going this year but i'm super excited to test out some of our latest upgrades and see how the car performs compared to the last time we were here so we're headed up that way you guys know how this works i'll do a really bad job of trying to vlog it and we'll see how much quicker the car is with hopefully some pretty cool in-car footage so let's go ahead and head that way and hopefully you guys find this video useful Now, as always, for everybody that's new to the channel, I create these videos to help keep you updated on the latest developments in our community, as well as discuss technical topics so that we have a better understanding of how our engines work. So if you're interested in more videos like that, be sure to subscribe because there will be a lot more coming out in the future. Now, for those that don't know, I'll just give a quick breakdown on the car. It's a 2016 340i with the ZF8 automatic transmission and rear wheel drive. Now, last year when I came, I had a pretty basic suspension setup. I was trying to demonstrate that the car really didn't need a whole lot of mods to be really quick and keep up with a lot of cars. So I had H&R sway bars, an M Performance LSD, and Milway camber plates, and that was pretty much it as far as like you know suspension upgrades now for horsepower it was like a maxed out ish stock turbo setup but it was on pump gas so probably around 400 maybe 420 wheel horsepower and now we've got a major upgrade which is the dynamic auto works ultra flow x turbo we're still on pump gas but now it's making about 470 horsepower so about a 50 horsepower increase the other thing is this is dialed in as kind of a track tune so torque isn't very high so it gives me the capability to really modulate throttle and hopefully optimize my traction as i'm going through turns now outside of that we've also upgraded a lot of the suspension components as well we now added on h r lowering springs so we have the stock adaptive shocks but the h r lowering springs lower the center of gravity a little bit but the biggest thing of course was increasing my camber because in the rear the maximum we could get was around negative 1.5 now we're just over negative two and that allowed me to increase the front to negative three to give the car good balance so we should be able to make it around turns, especially like the tighter turns, a lot better. We also have the SPL end links. These are adjustable end links that I had dialed in at a performance shop. So they did a weighted alignment and basically reduced any preload on the sway bars so I could have optimal handling and nice balance characteristics. Then of course we've got the F80 brakes, so that should help improve cooling a little bit and just give my brakes more reliable feel. You know, as we saw with the testing, it didn't really give me a significant improvement in just immediate braking performance, but with the brake pads and the tires that I run on track, it just gives it all around a package that makes it a lot more bulletproof. In my case, I've never ran into brake fade issues and I don't anticipate I would, but I just wanted to avoid it once and for all. So running those bigger rotors with better cooling will just help, you know, make the whole system bulletproof. And yeah, I think that's all. I apologize if I forgot anything. Like I said, it's super early, but all of that together should make the car handle a lot better. More camber, more power, lower center of gravity and better balance. Those are the kind of things you need in order to get around a track faster. So. Let's go ahead and head that way. Oh, but of course I forgot something. We're actually here a day early compared to usual because I am going to be getting certified to be an instructor. So the PCA actually does a class where they train you on how to be an instructor. And when you pass, hopefully I'll pass, <laughs> then I get to be an instructor at future track days. So if you guys ever run with the Kentucky PCA in the future, very good chance I'll be there. Very good chance I could instruct you and help you learn how to drive your car. So if you guys are interested, definitely check out the events that they put on up here in the Midwest area. Anyway, all right, yeah, let's go ahead and get to the track. So I know what you're probably thinking. You're thinking, Kevin has already filmed multiple vlogs that hit the track. At this point, there's no way he still forgets to film while the track day is going on. 
obviously he'll film as the track day progresses and keep us up to date on everything that's going on. There's no reason why he would wait until the end when he's driving home to do a recap. However, I apologize. I just completely forgot. I, there was a lot going on. So let's go ahead and just recap how this weekend went. Obviously, the car is safe and sound. I'm driving it home under its own power, which is good. But it definitely wasn't a foolproof weekend. Now, to start things off on Friday, I got an opportunity to go through the PCA instructor training, which for me is a huge deal. I've been wanting to do this for a long time and there are a lot of benefits. One is you go through the training, you learn how to drive better. You also learn how to teach other people how to drive because the whole goal is once you get through the class, you're going to be able to be an instructor at their HPD events in the future. So that was my goal to become an instructor, enhance my driving capabilities to the point where I can teach others. Now, as a part of this process, we had a bunch of other seasoned instructors that basically pretended to be new drivers and they drove horribly around the track and it was our responsibility as a kind of identify the things that they needed to work on and deliver it in a clear concise message so that we could you know do that for actual new people on the track so yeah a long day lots of in-car stuff with our mentors a lot of classroom stuff pretty much literally from 8 a.m until 4 p.m we were going back and forth but thankfully made it through got my instructor uh, wristband so I was actually able to instruct this weekend which is huge also this makes the weekends a lot cheaper because usually if you are an instructor they either give you a significant discount some places even let you go to the track for free if you agree to be an instructor so huge benefit that should allow me to do more track days in the future so big thank you to PCA for accepting me allowing me to be recognized as a national instructor and I really look forward to continuing to grow with the brand wink wink now after that went home got some rest and came back Monday excited to go but one problem I knew I was gonna have is that the car still had ethanol in the tank and I still have the same flex fuel tune that we dynoed a couple months ago but you know I try to track everything on pump gas because the car is a little bit easier to drive and especially in this case I wanted a little more power but not the huge bump that comes with ethanol so it would be easier to manage as I'm going through turns and stuff like that so I filled up with pump gas as much as I could but the drive here like this stupid fuel efficient B58 just didn't burn off enough E85 or as much as I thought so I was able to get it around to like E42 and uh, you know I did the best that I could so after that that's kind of what I was focused on but like usual swap our tires swap our brake pads put our track set up on and started going for some laps but while I was driving around I started hearing this really like loud racket like this knocking sound every time I would go around turns I would feel the car shake and vibrate really hard So I pulled back into the pits, double checked, it just seemed like my wheels might not be torqued properly. And sure enough, like two out of five on one side and three out of five on the other side were like barely hand tight, which was really frustrating because I felt pretty confident that I torqued my bolts, but maybe I was just rushing too much or somehow I missed it. But this is just my reminder to the rest of you guys, you know, if you get to the track, double and triple check your torque specs to make sure that your wheels are torqued properly. So thankfully I was able to capture that and fix it before the studs broke or something worse happened on track. So now I'm feeling good. The brakes feel good. The tires feel good. Let's get back on track for our second session. But lo and behold, that power snuck up on me.
I was literally fighting for traction the entire second session and it was really frustrating. Again, keep in mind my pump gas tune makes around 420 foot-pounds of torque, I think, while my ethanol tune makes almost 600 foot-pounds of torque, so almost 200 additional foot-pounds of torque, an extra 50%. It's not what I need. Definitely not what I need when I'm trying to balance traction and torque as I'm going through turns. So that was really frustrating. The pedal was very touchy. The turbo was spooling super quick. And one thing I did realize though, I had Sport Plus mode on, which I had been using with the stock turbo to get a little more pep out of it. And even when I went to NCM and I had my turbo issues, I put it into Sport Plus so that way it would pick up a little more pace. I didn't realize how much power I was losing just because of the wastegate issue. So today the car just felt like a rocket. I really was not expecting it. And again, coming out of every turn, it was just, it was too much to handle. So I tried another session and this time instead of doing Sport Plus, I just did traction mode. So that gives you, you know, basically you have stability control on, but you have traction control off. So that way it'll let the tires slip a little bit, but it won't let you completely spin off the track, generally speaking and you still have the soft throttle. So you still have comfort throttle and it's a little bit easier to modulate as you're coming out of turns. But even with traction mode on, I was still having some traction issues. It was still just a little bit too much. So then I decided, you know what, even though we're still feeling traction limited, let's just go for it. We're gonna push the car with the extra power. If anything, it should make me a little bit faster down the straights. So maybe that'll compensate for what I'm lacking in the turns. Let's just keep pushing and see what the car can do. So I kept going and then unfortunately coming down the front straight, I started hitting fuel cut. And so I scanned for codes and I determined that I was getting my reflex aux pressure low, which is like the low pressure fuel system. My basic thought behind this is I was getting fuel starvation. So, you know, with ethanol in the tank, my low pressure fuel pump activates. And when I'm accelerating fast enough, going through a turn fast enough, all the fuel will slosh to one side of the tank. And so when that secondary pump tries to turn on, there probably isn't any fuel there to, for it to suck up and make up the extra power the car is trying to make. So definitely something I'll want to address or consider if I need a surge tank or something when running that sort of setup, if I'm trying to make that much power at a future track day. But for now, it made more sense just to get pump gas in the car so that I would not need to use the secondary pump at all and get back the traction that I was looking for. So after I think two and a half sessions total, I finally got the car below a half a tank, filled up with pump gas again, and this time it was below E20. I think it was around like E12, much better. It wasn't the E10 I was looking for, but I was finally able to make a full lap without fuel cut, without traction issues, or anything else that I was dealing with. Now, unfortunately, at the point of making this video, I don't know what my times were <laughs> because one thing that I did change was I started using that GPS module earlier this year to make my videos hopefully more accurate and make the speed more representative of what I was doing, which it does seem like it does a better job. The external GPS can measure my speed better than the GPS in my phone. But for some reason, the car completely misses the start line and doesn't actually measure my times every time I cross it. So. I'm gonna post whatever my fastest lap is here. Hopefully it was like a better than a 120, you know, here it is.
so yeah that was my fastest lap again at this point i don't know how fast the car was but i think there's definitely a lot of room to improve regardless as i was learning the car i was really only starting to get comfortable with it that last session and then it was time to start packing up and get ready to go home so i'm looking forward to definitely finding the limits of this a little bit better in the future and just improving as a driver this is something i brought upon myself a little bit because like usual i changed too many things too soon before the track day and you know that's the reason why i wasn't able to drive the car and run out the ethanol like i thought i would during the week because it was on jack stands while i was changing the intake manifold and my brakes and stuff like that but yeah so that's how it went so thanks again to all of the partners on my bill that helped make the car get to this point H&R with the lowering springs SPL with the adjustable end links Bimmer Network with the updated intake manifold and of course Dynamic Auto Works with the upgraded turbo and subpar tuning for the engine tune and Sutfin with the trans tune so lots of cool parts getting added on oh of course in the csf heat exchanger that also played a big part in helping keep the car cool and consistent i can't wait to get back out here this is probably the last track day of the year but like i said now that i'm approved as an instructor it'll make track days cheaper so i should definitely be able to do more next year get more testing in get more seat time create more videos hopefully this is the stuff that you guys enjoy because i know for me this is the main thing i want to do this is where it all comes together but great car very happy with how it ended up hoping i can learn my lesson and not change stuff the week before and uh yeah i think that's pretty much it for this video so thank you guys for watching and i hope this helps and if you have any other questions or comments leave them down below as much pump gas as i could so after about what i believe was so after what i believe